Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about how to connect AWS Redshift database from inside a Jupyter Notebook. For that, you would need four Python packages, namely Pandas, PsychoPG2, PsychoPG2 Binary, and SQL Alchemy. I have already installed those packages in my system, so I will directly import certain uh, features from those packages which I want to use for this uh, creation of a Redshift engine. So let me go ahead and run this cell. Next, we are going to create a SQL query. It's a simple select top 10 star uh, from PG user table. PG user table is available in all the Redshift clusters. It's a native basic table. So I'm writing this simple query to test the function, to test the SQL engine which we are going to create. Now we are going to talk about the approach number one using which we can connect to that engine. So in this approach number one, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create five variables and each variable will hold some information about my database. So first variable, which is the endpoint, would be something like your database name followed by a string, then the region in which your Redshift cluster is hosted. Second variable is the username. Third is the password. Fourth is the port number. It could be different for you as well. Like it would be 8193 or 5052 or something like that. And lastly, again, your DB name, database name. For representation purpose, I have not passed my actual username and password over here due to confidentiality issue. What I did was I paused the recording, uh, passed my actual values in these variables and then now I'm going to create this SQL Alchemy engine as you can see over here. So what it does is it basically sews all these uh, five variables together and creates an engine string and that engine string is passed into this create engine function. Once our engine is ready, we are we just need to pass the SQL code text trapped along with the engine to this pandas function called as read SQL query. What I'm doing over here is I'm reading it and storing it into a data frame called as DF1. And basically after that, let me show what the data frame looks like. So first I'll run this SQL engine. Next I'll run this data frame creation command. It will take a few seconds. Once that is complete, I'll run this data frame one dot head to see what kind of data it holds. So you can see that I have a few columns in this data frame and this is directly coming from the Redshift database. Now some people can argue that this is not the most efficient way to connect to a Redshift database because then you're exposing, there is a risk of exposing your credentials to other users with whom you are sharing your uh, Jupyter Notebook file. So another approach which you guys can use is to use the getPass library. And over here, just I need to import the getPass library. And then the five variables which I had hard coded earlier can be entered as inputs in this format. So the user, while I'm recording this video, cannot see what I'm entering. After all the variables are entered, we need to rerun the engine command. Here, I have made a small change. Instead of using the port 2 directly, I have converted it to integer because the getPass function takes everything and converts it into string. So I had to convert it to integer and then use it to create the engine string. So let me go ahead and run this. Once it is executed, I will just create another data frame using the same SQL code that we initially wrote. And here I'm going to use the engine 2 that we just created. You can see the data frame 2 is already created now. Let's just quickly check what does our data frame 2 look like. And we can see it's similar to data frame 1 because we just changed the approach of creating the SQL engine, remaining everything remained same. For more such short technical videos, do subscribe to my channel and hit a like button on this video. Thank you. Have a great day.